this vlog is meant to be a summery vlog, okay? I'm even wearing my sunshiny top to try and bring out the sun, but it's dark and gloomy outside and it has been for like a month and a half now. We've had the occasional sunny day, but we're midway through August and I, I want the summer. I want the summer, please. I love autumn and I love the autumnal weather and how cozy it feels, but I need my summer first to appreciate my autumn. Anyway, despite it not being sunny weather, it is technically still summer. So this video is still relevant. Today, I'm gonna panic reading the rest of my summer TBR. So at the start of the summer I made a list of all the books that I wanted to read over the season and I have actually done a pretty good job of reading quite a few of them. I'm actually kind of surprised at myself, which maybe I should have more faith in myself, but I've been reading a lot these last few months. I don't really know how this has happened because usually I read more in the summer because I sit outside and read, but I haven't been able to do that. So I don't know, I've still read a lot. I've been in the reading mood. So for this video, I have a TBR stack. I'm going to be filming this over the course of a week. So I'm definitely not going to get around to all of these books, but I would like to try and pick from these five because these are some of the remaining books from the video that I made a few months ago. So we've got First Time for Everything by Henry Fry. We have Yinka, Where Is Your Husband by Lizzie Damilola Blackburn. There is The Island of Missing Trees by Elif Shafak, N.K. Jemison's The Fifth Season and Frankenstein by Jeanette Winterson. This stack is pretty varied. These are all kind of fairly different, I think. We've got two kind of contemporary romance-esques. We've got I don't really know what genre the island of missing trees is. There's historical in there, there's a slight fantasy element because it's told from the perspective of a tree. I think there's a romance theme going on as well. The fifth season is fantasy and Frankenstein is... I don't really know what genre Frankenstein is. I think it's like a social commentary type of book. I, even reading the blurb I have no idea. It's maybe a bit sci-fi? I don't know, but... I'm excited. So this is the stack, as I said, one week, so definitely not gonna get to all of these. I think I might start with one of these two. I think I'm most excited about these, but also I feel like they'll be the ones that I'll read the quickest, so it might give me a good start, a good boost for the week. But I will be doing a spoiler-free reading experience for some of these books. Maybe all of them, no, not all of them. Why am I even gonna put that on myself? It's not gonna be all of them. It's not, it's not gonna be all of them. It's gonna be some of them. Watch till the end to find out which. Welcome to the vlog. This is Panic Reading, my summer TBR. I've started First Time for Everything, which is going to be my first read for this vlog. I am a chapter in and I'm really liking the style, the writing style, the dialogue. It started in an STI clinic, which has just immediately set the tone and I love it. The first line, hang on. The first line is, usually when someone's fondling my balls, I disappear. It's, it's an intriguing first line. What's this about, I hear you ask? Well, it is following Danny, who is 27 and his life isn't awful. He's escaped his parents' tiny fish and chip shop for a proper run, l writing job in London. His beloved collection of houseplants are thriving. Nice. And he's just celebrated his first anniversary with his boyfriend, Tobbs. But Danny's life is thrown into chaos when he discovers an STI clinic that Tobbs might be cheating on him. And then he and his plants are unceremoniously evicted from his London flat. So he's forced to move in with his best friend, Jacob, a flamboyant non-binary artiste who Danny's known since childhood. And they're a centric group of friends in East London. For the first time, and with the help of his inscrutable therapist and colourful new housemates, Danny realises how little he knows about himself and slowly starts to question whether he is fine after all. This says on the bottom, it's perfect for fans of In at the Deep End by Kate Davies and Ghosts by Dolly Alderton. Both of those books have been five star reads for me. They're fantastic. I just, I know this is going to be really great and I, I can't wait to get further into it. I have decided to pick up the audiobook for Yinka Where's Your Husband, which from what I can tell at the moment is following Yinka, whose mum really wants her to have a husband and tries to find her somebody. And I think at the same time, she's trying to find herself a date for somebody's wedding. Maybe that might be what it's about will confirm tomorrow when I've got the book in front of me, just being lazy and not grabbing the book right now, but I want to read more of this because I've literally only read a chapter, but so far, really addictive writing style and I just, I just feel like I'm gonna love it. I'm getting that vibe. SMR room on and it's just started to very lightly rain but the lighting at the moment is just beautiful and I just the vibes look at the vibes they are immaculate got sprints on 
I've got my book. It's a good evening to read. Hi, I need to go out, but I need to also give you a quick update on the two books I'm currently reading, one of which is First Time for Everything, so I'm just going to give you a very quick summary of my thoughts so far. In this book we're following Danny, who is not having a good time of things. Danny is going through a lot of changes at the moment, a lot of stuff is being thrown at him, and he's just not really fitting in anywhere. I think he's got this real sense of trying to find his place, and he doesn't really know where that is, and I hope that this is going to be a journey that we go on with him to see where that is. He's currently moving in with his best friend Jacob, which he's very unsure about, but Jacob is so much fun. I love them so much. Jacob is bringing a ray of sunshine to Danny, and I really hope that Jacob is somebody to help bring Danny out of their shell. I'm really excited to see where we go with this, and I really want to just see more of Jacob, because I just find them so fun. Every time they're on the page, they just make me smile with their attitude to things, and I love that. I love that this is about friendship as well. This is really showing lots of different types of friendships, friendships that you've had since school, friendships that you've had more recently, friendships from work, and I think as an adult that's such a great representation of the types of different relationships you have going on in your life, and how those kind of age and shape differently as well, and I think it's doing a really great job of that. It's great with the dialogue, I personally prefer books that are more dialogue centric than they are description centric, and this one is. I think that not only the plot is great, but also just the structure of this book is just really fun and interesting, and it just flows really well, so I'm kind of seeing this as like a movie TV show in my head. So I'm having a good time with this. Yinkawet is your husband. This one I think I gave a description of a few days ago, I w I'm not sure if that was an accurate description or not, but we're following Yinka who is trying to find love but her mum is also trying to find it for her and her aunties are praying for her to exit single singledom. Her cousin's getting married and she wants to try and find a date for that wedding. So this is about the pressures that she's facing to try and find a date, and the pressures that she's putting on herself, but also the kind of involvement from her family, and it's got her kind of internal monologue that's quite humorous to go alongside all of that, and what she's thinking about everything along the way, and the comical moments within that as well. There's a lot of humor in this that I'm really enjoying, and it's just a really fun, easy style of reading again as well. So I'm really liking this. It's a great audiobook because it's got little sound effects, like little tech sounds going alongside it, which are really fun. It just makes it feel more interactive. So both of these, I'm having a good time with. I think they were good to start the vlog with. That was a really quick review. I talked very fast, <laughs> sorry, but I'm gonna head out now. I finished a book. I finished Inca Where's Your Husband. I gave this 3.5 to 4 out of 5. Oh no, there's a spider. I just spotted that. We're just gonna ignore that. Okay. I gave it 3 to 5. 3.5 to 4 stars. I really did enjoy the reading process of this and then reflectively look back on it and thought about the journey of getting there, and I'm, I'm unsure about my final feelings with this, which is why I've kind of like settled on a kind of between-ish rating for it. Yinka as a character goes through a lot of growth and development in this book, and whilst this is sort of a romance, I think it's more about her discovering herself and loving herself, and I really like that journey that we go on. But I did feel like there was a lot of it that felt like it was kind of scratching the surface, and that there was a lot more that we could have delved into, and I was kind of hoping it would go down that route. The characters were really great, and there were so many of them, that I felt like I wanted to get more information, I wanted more context about their friendships, and how they all kind of interacted with each other. Uh, so I really, I did like some sides of it, and I liked the characterizations and the way that it was written, and I enjoyed the fact that there was the kind of conversational structure as well with the text messages, and the communication was displayed through the structure of the book in that way. Hang on, I'll find an example. I like this kind of thing. We have emails and stuff, so there's like conversations going on, so I like that side of it. I enjoyed as well that we got to see our main character interact with her Nigerian heritage, with her food, and with her links to her family. I like that side of things as well. It was a good book, it just wasn't an amazing book. I think that's why it sat at like a 3.54-ish for me. I liked it. I felt like it could have gone into a bit more detail with certain things to just flesh it out a little bit more, and I like the journey that our character went on. Not so fussed about the romance side of it, to be honest, I wasn't, I didn't feel as invested in that, and I felt like certain elements of that were a little bit more predictable, but I think that's just kind of comes with the genre, but yeah, it was, it was decent. I do have a box to open up for you. This is the Adult Fairy Loot box for whatever month we're in. 
August. <laughs> I am a rep for Fairy Loot, so if you would like to receive 5% off the first box in the YA monthly subscription, you can use the code I do believe in fairies at checkout. If you don't want to see what's inside this box, then skip to the timestamp at the bottom of the screen and I will be done talking about it. So the theme for this box is powerful bloodlines. So the book is Forged by Blood by Ihigbo Okasan. I'm gonna check the pronunciation on that, but here is the book. The, seriously, every time I say it, but stenciled edges, how do they do that? That's literally a human on the stenciled edge. How? That's, that's just so clever. Anyway, here's the book. Let's have a look under the dust jacket and at the end pages. There's the end pages, the back, and then under the dust jacket. Ooh, okay. I might display this one with the dust jacket off. That's really pretty. I love the kind of ink splatter, kind of, well not splatter, but like the kind of ink bleed look of that. That's very pretty. It's an epic fast-paced adventure inspired by Nigerian mythology. This is a thrilling tale of rebellion and redemption, love and betrayal. This very loot exclusive edition has an exclusive cover, a digital sprayed edge with a block sprayed top and bottom edge, full colour design with foil details on the hardcover by Blanca.Design, a reversible dust jacket and foiled end paper art by Rosalyn Arts, a digital signature and bonus content, and there's also an author letter and character print on the reverse side by 8-Bit Faz. This is the character art and this is the author letter. There we go, that is the Fairy Loot adult book for August. I need to pick what to listen to as an audiobook next off of my TBR list. None of them are on script, which is annoying, so I'm gonna have to go through Audible to get them, I think, unless they are on Libby, but I've never actually successfully found anything on Libby when I've been wanting to read it, so I'll have a look, but I feel like that's that's gonna potentially be a flop, but I'll see. Anyway, I will let you know what I pick. I haven't really read too much more yet of First Time for Everything. I've been a bit bad with physically reading this week, apart from when I started that book. It's been a really full on week for me and my brain has just not been in the reading mood, which is great for a video where I'm trying to panic read my TBR, but I promise that I will do some more interesting things at the latter part of this vlog. I'm going to London on Saturday, so I will take you along there. I'm not really 100% sure exactly what the plans are yet, but I'm gonna be seeing Jade and Kath, so that's always a good time. There will be other things happening. I feel like a lot of my updates at the moment are just sat in my flat, so I apologize for that. It's probably not as interesting, but, you're gonna get loads of content of me in Vietnam and South Korea soon, so that's gonna be very much outside of my flat. I would like to talk about my feelings towards this book because they have changed, okay? I am not enjoying this anymore. I don't like the main character. Now, I always kind of have a little bit of an internal debate with myself when I think characters are written deliberately dislikable, because obviously, credit to the author there, because they've done a good job of making somebody dislikable. However, as a writing style, it just doesn't sit right with me. It's not one that I think I enjoy reading, unless the situation is just perfect for it. But we're following Danny, who is going through a lot of different changes. I know I've spoken about this already, and I thought that this would be a development story for Danny, and it is, but Danny is kind of going down this self-sabotaging route at the moment, and is becoming really dislikable in the process of that. And again, here's where I'm torn, because obviously, through going down that route, they're gonna probably have this huge huge revelation moment, and obviously they're being made dislikable deliberately to show us how much they are sabotaging themselves. Sorry if you just heard that very loud engine. But it's becoming too much for me. They're just so bitter and horrible and they're being really horrible to those around them. There's also a lot of homophobic slurs being used in this, and I don't really know why. I understand that they can be used as a writing technique to shock the reader, and it is shocking the reader. Like, I'm not, every time they come up, I'm like, okay, we're going down that route, but I don't think they necessarily need to be there, in my opinion. I understand that the author is obviously consciously chosen to do that and this is definitely a book that is very LGBTQA plus aware and talks about lots of different people within the LGBTQA plus community but these slurs are definitely having a hard-hitting effect they're definitely having a shock factor and I, I get that that's the point personally I, I don't feel like they needed to be there necessarily I think I still would have disliked the character just as much without them being used they just seem to be slightly unnecessary in my opinion these are just my thoughts but at the moment Unfortunately, 
I'm not loving this as much as I was at all and I think that it's probably going to go down the redemption route and our character's going to go through a lot of changes and I hope that's the way it goes down. I still like Jacob the best, I think that they are basically the best thing in this book and they are being treated very badly and I don't like that they're being treated like that and yeah I just feel like it's become a bit of a mess really. I've got this much left to read so I'll finish it later today and let you know my final thoughts. I really don't know what's going to happen with it. I mean I really hope it turns itself around. It really needs to for me. Otherwise why? Why has it gone in this direction? It's a standalone as far as I'm aware so please please turn around please have a redemption and I mean not this is again the thing that it kind of implies that having a redemption thing like that removes everything that came before it and I don't think it should be like that I'm kind of guessing the direction this is going to take obviously but I think when you've got books like this and the main character has been such a shit just because they then realize they've been a shit and apologize to everybody doesn't excuse all the horrible stuff they did whilst they were being a shit it's difficult because there's also mental health conversations going on and obviously when you're spiralling that really does change your outlook on things so I don't want to be inconsiderate to that side of things as well. See I'm very torn in my own brain how to even think about this book but I don't know I'm heading out for some drinks with friends shortly so I'm not going to read any more until I get back later but hopefully I will finish it today. <laughs> you can't even tell it's a shark. He's dead. Oh actually they can breathe underwater he's not dead. I finished this book and I'm trying to compile my thoughts on it. I'm really not sure. I mean, I did not like Danny as a character. Yes, he did have his redemption arc, but I don't think that excuses some of the things that we saw from him. And that was kind of a point he was highlighting about somebody else as well. When someone else apologized to him for something, he was like, well, that doesn't excuse all the things you've done. But yet he was apologizing to people, assuming it would excuse all the things that he'd done kind of. But I was talking about the language used yesterday there's actually a paragraph towards the end that talks a little bit about that kind of language. So it's referring to the word queer and it says, this is a word I've always shied away from, not just shied away from, but been afraid of, I realise. That and all the other words of its ilk. And then it goes on to list some homophobic slurs. And it says, I've always hated them, hated myself by association. I even hated it when queer people use them. And now, now I feel calmer about it. I am queer, what's the big deal? I'm gonna interrupt myself real quick because I don't think I worded this next part very well. I'm gonna keep it in, but I don't think I worded it exactly as I was trying to articulate. But when talking about the language used, obviously this paragraph refers to the word queer initially and then goes on to talk a little bit more about homophobic slurs. What I was talking about in terms of the word that I felt had a shock factor to it and I, I was very and am still very torn about the purpose of that word being in there is obviously not the word queer and is a word beginning with F. And I think also this paragraph kind of talks about like the reclaiming of words so again I still don't know how I feel about it all anyway here's me again <laughs> with that paragraph there's obviously an acknowledgement of these words being used like the author has obviously done this very deliberately I just still don't know how I feel about it I'm honest that's how I feel about this whole book I'm not really sure how I feel about it I think there was a lot of things done for a purpose and to prove a point obviously everything is in here for a reason but I just don't think for me it was a enjoyable reading experience. I ran it through Core Pile and it came out as a three star. I expected it to come out as less than that to be honest but I suppose my main flaw with it was under the character section. If you if you don't know Core Pile is a system created by G from Book Roast. If you pop into the YouTube search bar it's C-A-W-P-I-L-E but it allows you to work out how to review your books and each letter stands for something and the C is standing for character. So I reviewed the character section lower because obviously Danny being our main character and being a character I really disliked but then I was torn because I really did like Jacob and some of the other characters but then there were some other really awful characters I don't know I don't know because obviously when someone is written to be deliberately dislikable that's written well and I'm always unsure whether I'm reviewing characters based on whether I liked them or not or whether they were well written and obviously I think it probably should be well written but I just didn't it didn't click it did not click I'm very torn as you can see I feel like my thoughts are kind of stumbling over themselves I'm not really sure what more to say about this to be honest I gave it three stars I thought it'd be less but it did come out as three so okay but average saved probably by other elements of the plot next though I am going to start Frankenstein which is not the book I thought I would read next but I was looking at the stack and I was like, do you know what? I'm gonna give this a go. And also, hang on, Jeanette Winterson, author of Frankenstein, wrote a book that I loved as a child that I actually think I still have in my flat. This, she wrote Tangle Wreck. I couldn't even tell you 
what this book is about, but I remember loving this as a kid and I thought it was the same author and it is. So I'm kind of excited about that. I don't think I've ever vlogged from here before, probably because these bells are jingling. Hang on. I start, we're, gonna just, we're just going to stand here while I tell you what this book's about. I'm just going to have to read you the blurb because I think this has a lot and I don't even know how to summarise it. But I did vaguely like start a page of it and the writing style is beautiful. So the tagline at the top says, what happens when Homo sapiens is no longer the smartest being on the planet? As Brexit grips Britain, Rye, a young transgender doctor, is falling in love, the object of their misguided affection, the celebrated AI specialist, Professor Victor Stein. Meanwhile, Ron Lord, just divorced and living with his mum again, is set to make his fortune with a new generation of sex dolls for lonely men everywhere. Ranging from 1816, when 19-year-old Mary Shelley pens her radical first novel, to a cryonics facility in present-day Arizona, where where the dead wait to return to life. Frankenstein shows us how much closer we are to the future than we realise. I think this sounds like it's going to be really interesting. I don't, I can't remember what made me put this on my summer TBR as such, but I'm going to go for this one. I think this one was, was the one I was leaning most towards. It's long listed for the Booker Prize in 2019. Intelligent, inventive, very funny. Let me, hang on, I'm going to find you an example of the writing. One-handed. So I made a little note on this section because I really liked the line that said, the world is at the start of something new. We are the shaping spirits of our destiny. And though I am not an inventor of machines, I am an inventor of dreams. Isn't that a good line? I thought that was great. Anyway, this is what I'm reading. I'm going to London today to see Jane Cath. I think we're going to the Freddie Mercury exhibit and then the Science Museum, I think. That's as, as far as I know it, so I'll take you along with. And I'm gonna bring this book. I don't know if I'm gonna have much opportunity to read it because I'm driving, so I'm just gonna to listen to an audiobook, which I'm gonna be listening to for another video, so I'm not gonna do any of the TBRs for this as an audiobook um, now, but this will be my physical read. Hopefully I can finish it by the end of the video because it is currently Saturday and I don't even know what day I'm ending this, like Tuesday maybe? I don't know. I said I was gonna do it for a week, but I'm stuck in here. Hang on. <laughs> I said I was gonna go for a week, but I'm not really sure. Anyway, reading plans. I don't know what the audio is like on this, so if it's bad, I'm sorry. We are not going to the Freddie Mercury exhibit because, Kath, why aren't we going? Because it actually opens at 12. And what time is it now? 11. Yeah. <laughs> so we're not gonna go because the queue is really long. And we're instead gonna go to Hyde Park and the Science Museum, which was already on the plan. But Hyde Park is a new addition. What did you oh, think? I nearly walked um, on my laces. Danger! High voltage! <laughs> this is meant to be a boy and a dolphin. It's not, it's a boy and a fish. Oh, look at how his ankle has been reconstructed. Oh. Due to uh, erosion. Wear and, tear and erosion. Yeah. Come on an adventure with me. Ooh! Ow! <laughs> This rookie. Like a, Look at honestly, her. Oh. Rookie mistake. Rookie.
Hello, I'm back from London. I have many things to tell you about. London was really good. I feel absolutely exhausted today. I don't really know what's hit me, but I feel so tired. So it was a really good day. It was a very fun day out. I always love seeing Jade and Kath. We went to, we were gonna go to the Freddie Mercury exhibit and then we realized we got there too early and we decided we were gonna go somewhere else. So we went to Hyde Park. We sat down and chilled there for a bit. There were so many dogs. There were so many dogs. I don't think I even filmed any of the dogs, but there were so many dogs really cute. And then we went to lunch, we went to Leon's, and then we went to the Science Museum, uh, which was very, very busy. And then we went to Waterstones Piccadilly, because of course we did. Of course we did. Or actually, do you know what we did first before we did that? We went to uh, no, Leicester Square, we went to Leicester Square to grab McFlurry, because we, we just, we fancied some ice cream. We were sat in the grassy area of Leicester Square, and we were sat in a little triangle and Jade had her phone on the floor, like on the grass. We all had like our bags around us and stuff. Like the phone was in the middle of the three of us. And suddenly somebody comes over with a really dirty sheet of a newspaper and like really used an old weird sheet. Of, it was, it was a strange thing to just have that you were trying to give out to people. And they kind of like put it in front of us in the middle of our little group on top of Jade's phone. Kath immediately spots it and is like, Jade, your phone, your phone, your phone. And it's like, it's a tactic that is used to try and steal people's phones. Including that in the vlog, because I just want to make people aware, because I hadn't really thought about that. Like, I, my brain, because I have contamination OCD with germs, I was looking at it like, that's really dirty, that's really dirty, and it's near our food. That was where my brain was at. Not like, that's going to be a way to steal Jade's phone, but obviously they'd have then scooped up the paper with the phone underneath it. Obviously, because Kath was on it, it was we realised what was happening and the guy did not do that and quick, very quickly left and ran away, pretty much. But really weird experience. So if, that, if you have any situation like that, be super vigilant and just make sure that you are holding on to your personal items in that kind of an environment. Just a little PSA there. Anyway, went to Waterstones and I got some books. I also read a little bit of uh, more of Frankenstein. I'll show you what books I got in a sec. This book I'm really enjoying so far. The writing is beautifully poetic. It's not got any speech marks though. <laughs> it's it's a Sally Rooney situation. Why do we not have speech marks? Why? I I find it so difficult when books do this because obviously it's a structural choice. But it's really difficult to know when there's dialogue and when it's like an internal monologue and who is speaking when and just it's it's a choice it's not a choice i enjoy however i am enjoying this book we have met mary shelley and now i think we're in the modern day maybe the modern day and we're meeting somebody else i don't really know i'm literally 30 pages and i was reading it in between um well i was on the tube so enjoying it liking the writing style wish there were speech marks but it's not like a deterrent for me at this point. I got books as well. What did I get? What did I get? So I got Chain Gang All Stars by Nana Kwame Adji Brenya. This I saw recommended on Jack Edwards' channel a little while ago. Um, I don't know what video, but I saw this recommended and I have been wanting to have a look at it ever since. It's set in a prison where there's this televised game in which the prisoners fight for their freedom. There's a lot more to it than that, but that's kind of the general initial part of the blurb. This is a signed copy. It's a very pretty copy as well. Hang on, let me show you under the dust jacket. But I think the concept of it sounds fascinating. It sounds really interesting. Look at that. It sounds like such an interesting concept though, the idea of it being televised and the fact that you can just fight for your freedom rather than actually the justice route of things. I think it's going to be interesting. So I picked that up and then I also got possibly what is now the chunkiest book on my TBR. It's Imaginary Friends by Stephen Chbosky, who is the author of Perks of Being a Wallflower. This is a total different direction though. This is a horror. It is... I don't even know. It's following Christopher Reese, who's been through a lot by the age of seven, and he will go through much more before he turns eight. Um, his mum wants to protect, protect him, and she'll have to do more than she ever imagined. They've moved to a new town, which is very isolated, which means it's perfect for what's about to happen. 
the bottom of the blurb says something which no one can explain but everyone can feel something that will change everything the blurb gives very little away but i'm going to assume that there's some kind of like creepy thing happening now i am searching for the fear i'm searching for a book that's going to make me feel scared the one of the reviews on this one says this is for people that like being scared silly i also think that i find it scarier when you don't really know the thing that's meant to be scary like obviously you know what it is that's meant to be scaring you but you don't have too many details and it's the unknown that makes it scary like if there's a creature if there's a monster if there's something paranormal to not fully know the whole story i think is the scary thing i think when it's revealed too early in something like the creeper for example i felt that was revealed too quickly and it left the mystery side not very mysterious and i think that let me down whereas this sounds like it's not going to do that it's it's a commitment look how big she is i mean she is chonky she is so chonky but october is coming i don't just read my horror in the october but it is my favorite month to read my horror it is it's coming by the time you're watching this it's actually really really coming it's august when i'm filming this but it'll be at september when you're watching this so i think yeah i don't know anyway i it's late it was not that late actually it's it's just gone 10 it's not really that late but i'm tired so i'm going to sit and chill maybe watch a bit of the bold type because we finally got it on bbc3 that's another psa the bold type is a fantastic tv show it's great it is following three women who work at a magazine that is all about empowering women it's so good it's so refreshingly done it's so brilliant it also has so many different topics and it was i think on netflix and then season five we never got it in the uk and now it's all on bbc3 so i'm really happy about that so i've been streaming that a lot this week so yeah anyway this is a jumbled update oh wait also hang on one more thing one more thing i have got a delivery that i'm so excited about i want to show you okay here it is i got some new clothing I've, it's kind of in a bit of a mess because i tried it on hang on let me let me get it like to show you okay oh you can't even where is it <laughs> hang on there's a little there it is there's a little crook on it this is a really bad show and tell can i put the camera hang on let's go over here sorry the lighting is going to be really bad okay so i got this t-shirt which has a little crook this is from Zelda, from Breath of the Wild, Tis the Kingdom, just generally the Zelda universe. You, you have to save these little guys and help them and they give you little seeds. So I got this t-shirt, I deliberately got an oversized fit and then I also, <laughs> literally in exactly the same color, you can't really tell but this is like a forest green. But this has a little brown guy and this one's got a little green guy but I got an oversized jumper as well. Look at the little green guy. I kind of feel like I could have got this in a different color. I understand that. And I'm a little bit worried that this is kind of, looks like a garden center uniform. <laughs> Hang on, I'm gonna try it on to show you. I really love it. I wanted it to be oversized and I was ordering it online and they're custom made. So I actually think I ordered this about three weeks ago, but um, because they're custom made, they take longer to arrive, which was fine. Like I knew that when ordering it, um, but it also means you can't return them. So I'm saying custom made. They're not custom made, they're handmade. I think that's what I mean. So I was really like worried that the size would be wrong because I wanted, every time I buy oversized, okay, my hips are the biggest hindrance to me when I'm trying to buy oversized stuff because everything like is baggier up here and then it clings on my hips. So it isn't really truly oversized. I want something that just feels like it could be a dress on me essentially when I'm trying to buy something deliberately oversized because you just, I want that kind of cozy vibe. So. I've got some really sexy shorts on right now, but hang on, can you even, can you see? Look, isn't that actually oversized? And look, it's so cute. I'm gonna be buying more from this shop. Hang on, I'll get you the shop name. Okay, this is the, the shop card. Wait, is that gonna do the thing? Focus, focus, is it doing it? It's called Nooks Needles Co. And it's Nooks Needles co.etsy.com which is n-o-o-k-s needles co.etsy.com and it's so cute honestly so cute so worth it the detailing on this like are you kidding me look i'm so happy anyway this is this is the vibe i mean it's too hot to wear at the moment which i'm not complaining about like i'm happy that we've got the the summer weather today because i love the sun i don't so much love it being like stiflingly hot but it's it's been like a good temperature today i think but anyway i got a new jumper i got new books i have a cookie that i'm gonna go eat from ben's cookies that i got in london so i'm gonna heat it up for like a couple of seconds in the microwave because yum and i'm just gonna watch the bold type and read and i just chill Hello, I have finished this book, which means I finished the last book for this vlog, which means this is my wrap up and also my final thoughts on Frankenstein by Jeanette Winterson. I am so confused by my final thoughts on this book. So I have written them down 
I have notes, I've bought notes, so let's, let's consult my notes because I finished it last night and I just kind of had to sit on my brain for a sec because I don't know how I feel about this book. This had some some conversations that my brain was just like, like, no. <laughs> because it was talking about like AI and what it means to be human and stuff, there was a lot of, a lot of topics in here and at times my brain was not braining with it. So, my notes. We had this story split into two different types of, well two different plots really. We've got a fictional biography of Mary Shelley, which I found interesting. I studied Frankenstein and Mary Shelley at school and it was nice to kind of revisit that. So I liked that and there was kind of like a little bit more delved into the, the thought process behind creating Frankenstein. So I found that interesting. Sorry, I just got interrupted by a phone call. Anyway, story nine number two is following this this group of people who are like looking into AI and sex bots and kind of creating life in a different route. So there's these kind of mirrored conversations of creating life because that is what the story of Frankenstein is also about. So there were those links, but other than that, I felt like they were two separate stories really. Like that side of things, mm. Didn't like the fact there are no speech marks. I don't like that as a trait in books personally, like as a reading format, writing format, I don't enjoy it. I, I like to know when my dialogue is, is coming because otherwise it disjoints it, it throws me. I'm not a fan of that format personally. Aside from the format though, the writing was really beautiful, it was very quotable, very lyrically written but still easily digestible, and I enjoyed that side of things. I do like Jeanette Winterson's writing style, so that was a good thing. There was a lot of talk in here about our trans main character needing to define themselves with labels and with their genitalia, and it's something that they clearly weren't comfortable doing. The conversations there just seemed to be so pushy and so intense for our main character that they just didn't really feel like they were relevant to the plot, to the characterization. I don't really know why they were there other than to make the reader feel uncomfortable. And this is where I kind of get caught up in things because I think sometimes authors write to make us feel uncomfortable. And that is done very deliberately to put us in a place where we're kind of questioning things and having those conversations. And then similarly, you get authors that are writing those things not to make us feel uncomfortable, but just as a bad take on something. And in this situation, I'm honestly not sure. I am not trans, so I don't feel like I can speak fully to the representation in this book. I can't speak to the intent behind it, but in my opinion, it made me feel uncomfortable with the language and the way that it was used towards our trans main character. It felt incredibly transphobic. It felt just unnecessary and unneeded. There was a really horrible graphic and aggressive scene in this as well linked to our main character. So if you feel like you need to check the trigger warnings out for that, I would recommend you do. That is kind of an overview, I think, of all my notes. It really, it really felt like a mixed bag. It was beautiful writing, annoying structure choices, and odd decisions within parts of the plot. I'm honestly really unsure. I gave it three stars. I ran it through Corpile and that's what it came out as. So, mm, mm. I was reading reviews when I finished this just to see what other people's thoughts were. And there was a lot of mixed reviews. There was like some five star reviews saying it was fantastic and just brilliant. And then there was some like one and two star reviews. A lot of the one to two star reviews were talking about the trans rep in this book and the need for the direction of negativity towards our trans main character that was taken. And as I've already said, what purpose that serves overall. A lot of those reviews had replies with people having conversations about that in the comments as well, so there's a lot to talk about around this book. There really is. Set aside the AI and everything like that and the conversation of like the right to create a life and what it means to create life, there's other conversations going on. Really don't know. Gave it three stars. That is the end of this vlog. <laughs> it's been a mixed bag of reading, I think. Been an interesting vlog. That is me reading a lot of my summer TBR now. I'm not gonna say reading all of my summer TBR, but I've read a lot of my summer TBR. I'm pleased with myself. I've made good progress. Thank you so much for watching this vlog. I really hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next one.